welcoming you back to the field. And on this week's podcast, we have the head baseball coach, Billy Berry. Woo! <laughs> we don't have her team here to do extra, <laughs> so I got it for you. But a little bit about him. He was a former Ram. Yes, a Ram, not a Bulldog. So he went to Bluefield College where he was a student and he played baseball. And he was a three-time all-conference first team. And then he was inducted into their Hall of Fame. So, you know, you had to be pretty great to be in the Hall of Fame. Wow. And then... Once he graduated, he would, became the head coach in 2004, and he was with them for two seasons, and then he came on to TW. Well, it probably was TWC at the time. It was. It was. I came here in 2016 when yeah. it was still TWC, yeah. so I got this. <laughs> and then he ventured out. He did some other coaching, and then he returned back in the summer of 2017, and he got a World Series under his belt. That's amazing. That's yes. really amazing. I was really following you guys, and I was calling my dad. I was like, Dad, they just won the World Series. He was like, what? So it was very exciting. And another, like, amazing fact about you, you had 49 players, former players under you go into the professional league, and that's just amazing. Mm -hmm. And when I was doing some research on you, I saw a lot of things. I was like, geez, where do I even start? But, you know, I had to get to the points of it all. But it's a... Joy to have you on the show, Coach. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> yes, how have you been? I've been good. You? Great. Good. I'm on episode 31. That's yeah. amazing. Uh, we watched. You've done a good job with this. It's really? Been good. Yes, yes so. thank you so good much. Good. But let's get into your questions. Okay. So what sparked your love for baseball, and why did you want to begin coaching? You know, I was, you know, growing up, I'm from Richmond, Virginia. So mm -hmm. growing up, uh, you know, I came from a family of four and was the oldest of four. My dad was... Uh, was in the Air Force, we bounced around a little bit, um, you know, early on in my life, and um, just kind of started playing all three, uh, mm -hmm. played football, basketball, and baseball, okay. um, and then uh, baseball just kind of became the thing that I wanted to do, uh, kind of when I got to high school, and um, just kind of pursued it, then through college, and then uh, didn't really know when I, I graduated college, and didn't really know what I was wanted to do, and, and um, so... Basically, uh, John Morano, who was the head coach at the, at the high school that I went to, mm -hmm. uh, he asked me to coach, and, and uh, I started there in the uh, in the uh, fall of '97. So my first season was uh, in '98. Thought about. Yeah. <laughs> so my first about? season was in '98 uh, at Mills Godwin High School, and we were fortunate. We won a state championship in that first year, and then it just kind of took off from there. So. Okay. With now, your second question is. With you having 49 former players go into the professional league, how does that feel? I think it's. I think it speaks first to, you know, our assistants that have been here and how they identify talent. Um, I think you know two guys that really stick out is Stephen Baker, who was here from uh, the fall of 2009 until the uh, until the spring of 2015, and then he took a job with the San Diego Padres. He's now an area scout with the San Diego Padres, and then Brad Neffendorf, who when I came back from Baylor. Uh, was here and um, he was here for with me for three years and is now the head coach at LSU Shreveport. So, both those guys did a really good job of identifying talent and um, and then those those guys that got the opportunity to come in uh, and play did a really good job of of, of, uh, of producing while they were here and uh, made themselves extremely marketable mm -hmm. on the field and uh, and we're excited. So you know Ryan Hartman uh, who was uh, the national pitcher of the year in uh, in 2016. Uh, or excuse me, 2017, mm -hmm. uh, is is uh, is on the spring training roster with the Houston Astros. Taylor Saucedo, uh, who was a uh, draft pick in 2015, is with the, it finished last year in AAA with the Toronto Blue Jays. So uh, those two guys are probably two names to watch. He's possibly okay. hoping to be the next, uh, you know, the, the next guys to, uh, to to get on a major league roster. So. Okay. So you know, I know a lot of boys follow TWU baseball who want to come into college and play. What do you look for in a recruit? I think the biggest thing is, you know, you know one of the things that we look for is is obviously talent. Yeah. You know, that's first and foremost. Mm -hmm. You know, first and foremost. Uh, second is, um, you know, we their story. I mean, I think everybody's story, uh, at least for our program, is different. We've got guys that come from different backgrounds. We've got guys that come from different levels, uh, whether it be out of high school or whether it be junior college or, or division one um, so everybody's story is a little bit different and and how they how they end up uh, being recruited by us and I think uh, it's taking each one of those guys and, and looking at it and seeing one what their situation is and then two um, how do we feel like we can help them uh, as they move forward uh, you, you know 
we've got guys that uh, that come because they, you know, maybe academically they didn't make it where they were, mm -hmm. or athletically they they went somewhere uh, and maybe didn't get the same opportunity that they thought they were going to get. So. Um, I think looking at their story and, and really kind of seeing if it lines up with something that we can help them with. I think the other thing is uh, we want guys that want to be here. Um, I think that's the other thing. I think, uh, you know, sometimes, uh, especially with some of the guys that are transferring from Division One schools, yeah. uh, it's tough because Athens is a small town. You know, we're, we're a thousand students. So mm -hmm. It's not what they're used to. Yeah. So, you know, it's a little bit different from there. Uh, but, um, you know, I, I'll be honest with you, I think we've taken guys uh, – at times that maybe other schools wouldn't have taken. Uh, but at the same time, I think our motto has always been, it's not really what you've done, it's what you do while you're here. And I think everybody kind of deserves that second and third chance. And so um, I think their story is what's the most interesting. And then, uh, then kind of what can we do uh, to work together to, to maybe right their wrongs or, or to make their situation better here than it was somewhere else. Yeah. Okay, so what are your expectations for this season? That it would stop raining to get <laughs> yes. outside and kind of, uh, you know, I, I think we've got nine guys that returned from last year's national championship team, um, so a lot of it's brand new. Uh, so I don't really know if there is an expectation right now. I think one of the things that we try to use, you know, the month of February for is kind of like spring training uh, mm -hmm. to get an idea of, of who we have and and uh, what pieces fit where uh, and that sort of thing. Um, you know, we're ten and two right now, so we've started out well uh, and uh, got you know we start conference this weekend against Truett McConnell. So uh, I think um, you know right now the expectation is is we just want to start we want to start to kind of find out who we are and then start playing uh, you know kind of our best baseball you know towards this time of the year when we start conference and we move on. And, and I think as the weather warms up, those things start to help as well. So. Yes, I definitely hope so with the weather. Yeah. Now, how do you balance being a head coach and a family man? Because I know you have three beautiful children mm -hmm. and a lovely wife. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I have a great wife. Jackie, you know, kind of takes on the responsibility of, of – you know, especially during the season with running the kids where they need to go. I've got a 16-year-old son who's a sophomore at McMinn. I've got a 12-year-old son who is a sixth grader at, uh, at the middle school. And then I've got a five-year-old daughter. So she's in kindergarten at City Park. So, um, you know, in the fall, we don't, you know, we don't really, we don't practice on the weekends in the fall. Uh, so both my boys play, you know, travel ball. So uh, that helps me to get an opportunity to, to see them in the fall and, and see, you know, them uh, you know, at their games and, and, you know, we can kind of, you know, sometimes we have one going in one direction, one going the other direction. So, you know, we'll kind of maybe switch off on the weekends and things like that. Uh, but she takes on the brunt of, of everything during the season. And um, I'm extremely grateful and thankful for that. She also works full time. So she juggles a job and, and, um, and then also, you know, kind of getting them where they need to go and doing that. But um, I think the biggest thing is just what I've learned in, in the 13 years of being here is, is that, uh, you know, work's work and home's home. And mm -hmm. I didn't do a great job of that when I was, you know, when I was first getting started here. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I think it's that balance of, of, of doing the job that you're hired to do, but then also, uh, you know, going home and, and being the father and the husband that you're called to be as well. So uh, I think uh, she does a good job of keeping me in check. And, and so that helps when I get, you know, too wrapped up in things that are going on. But um, I wouldn't say that I've got it down pat, but mm -hmm. I'm a little bit better. Than, as I get older, I'm a little bit better uh, than I was when I was younger. Okay. So. Well, I have a bonus question for you. Okay. So, um, you know, I run the Bulldog Backfit account on Twitter, mm -hmm. and you guys tweet a lot about Newland. Mm -hmm. And for those who don't know, I saw that you guys wear orange mm -hmm. on Wednesday. It's Wednesday. I saw your Wednesday, orange shirt. Yeah, yes. So for the people who do not know, can you give a little story about it? Yeah. That? So <laughs> back in last fall, uh, my daughter came home. Uh, one day from school, and she, I was, I'd just gotten home from practice, a fall practice, and she was discussing with, uh, with Jackie um, in the kitchen about how she needed to wear an orange shirt the next day because there was a, uh, there was a, a kid that was going to school there that had cancer, and he was leaving to, to go start his treatments and, and this and that, and I was about halfway less than halfway not, and, and so um, that night, we put everybody to bed, and, and we had kind of started getting ready for bed ourselves. And, and I asked her, I said, what was, I said, what was Brinley talking about today? And she said, I don't know. She said, apparently, there's a, there's a, a kid, and, and he's got cancer for the third time, and he's having to go back. And he was in school, and now they're taking him out of school. So I was in, you know, kind of the next day, I woke up, and I was kind of intrigued about the story. Um, I've got a friend that works at the school board, so I called him and asked him, did he know anything about it? And he said yes. And 
at that point in time, I just asked uh, if they could get me in touch with uh, somebody, his dad or his mom or something like that. And so I talked to Jason, his dad, on the phone, and um, we invited uh, Neilan to come over and, and just kind of watch practice and, and hang out. And so we, we gave him some gear. Uh, he hung out for the day, was really shy. Uh, at this point, he was, uh, he was, he was in, you know, he was in treatments and, and, and those were kind of heavy and he was in a mask and, you know, for, you know, obviously um, for infections and yeah. things like that. So uh, it was one of the, it was just a day and, and you know, we kind of at the end of it said, hey, if you want to come back again, you know, and we just thought it'd be like a one day thing and, mm -hmm. and we would kind of support him and that sort of thing. Uh, about two days later, his dad called me and said, hey, uh, do, you, do you think he could come back? And we said, yeah, sure. So he came back and and um, then he was there um, just about every day <laughs> moving forward. Uh, and then he left. Uh, he had to have a bone marrow transplant uh, in November, so he left to go to Nashville. Uh, we went to Nashville two or three different times to see him. Uh, then he came back, and, and uh, when he got back after 120 days in Nashville, he was, again, he was at every game, and they traveled to away games. His family would travel to away games, and, and um, so he was at practice, and then when we got the opportunity to go to Lewiston in the World Series, yes. we, were, you know, we had some great people that donated money for him and his dad to be able to go with us. And uh, so it's just, he's, it kind of started out as something really innocent that's kind of yeah. turned into, he's just a part of our program and his family's a part of our life. And, uh, and our kids doing excellent, our guys doing an excellent <laughs> job every day of, of making sure that he feels wanted and, and, and that he's important to what we do. And, and, uh, and I think that's the impressive thing for me just as a coach is, is that I think when you look at 18 to, you know, the 22 to 23 year olds, they don't really do anything unless they want to do it. So yeah. it's pretty genuine uh, to watch our guys interact with him and and uh, and for him being around every day. But um, you know, we just ask everybody to be prayerful. I was in Knoxville last night uh, at Children's. He is last yesterday. He started uh, 30 more days of chemotherapy. Uh, well, seven days of chemotherapy, and then the other 23 days he'll be monitored. So uh, he'll be. Uh, away from his family, him and his mom, uh, for the next 30 days. So uh, we, we went up last night. Uh, we'll go back again uh, Monday uh, of, the, of next week when we get back from Truett. And um, just ask everybody to continue to wear orange on Wednesday. Yeah. And, and then also uh, just to continue to think about them and their family. He has uh, three, other, three other siblings. He's got um, two sisters and a brother. Uh, so I also you know, think of them as well because it's a, it's a whole family that's going through this, just not one person. Yes, that's beautiful. Neelan, I hope you're watching. I'm definitely going to start wearing orange for your Wednesdays. I love the story. I love what you guys do. And I wish you guys the best luck this season. Thank and you thank you so much, much for being on welcome. the show. Thank you for what you do. This has been great. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. you and I th hope you guys tune in next Thursday on Bulldog Backfield where I'm taking you back to the field. Bye. <laughs>